In today's video, I'll be showing you how to add text to videos in CapCut so that you can create your own subtitles, like this. I add subtitles to my videos for two reasons. One is it allows me to get to the point faster and make my videos shorter, because when I'm doing the voiceovers for my videos, like this one for example, which is a tutorial on how to activate dark mode inside Facebook mobile on an iPhone, when I do the voiceover, I just need to read the text that's on screen exactly as it's written. So it's a way of scripting your videos if you're nervous and uncomfortable speaking on camera. Also because CapCut has a text to speech feature, which will take what you type on screen and speak it for you if you don't like the sound of your own voice on camera. You'll want to stick around to the end of this video for some important tips if you plan to use the text-to-speech feature once you've added your text. Let me show you how to set up text in your videos as subtitles. The first thing I'll do is search for CapCut and open it. Then tap on the plus sign to add the screen recording of my Facebook tutorial. This clip here. I'll tap on Add to Project. Once the clip is added, just tap Text from the main toolbar. When you do, you'll see a text box appear in the center of the screen that says Enter Text. Once you tap on the A plus icon, you may not be able to see it clearly because the background's white, but don't worry, I'll show you how to change that later. So keep watching. I'm going to type my text, and then I'll tap on the check mark. Now that I've created the first text box, I'll scrub over, long press on the end of that text box, and drag it out to the end of my video clip. This will allow me to have text all the way throughout the entire video, as well as keep my font properties like the size, color, and style exactly the same if I want to. Now that I've done that, I'll scrub back to the beginning of the clip, and bring up the keyboard once more by double tapping on the layer. As you can see, you've got options above the keyboard. If I tap on Style, I can change the color from the default color of white to black, which would make the text on this background easier to read. I'll just tap on the color black to select it. At this point, you can also move, reposition, and resize the text as you need to. The next thing I'm going to do is go back to the main toolbar and tap on Format to change the format of the video because I'm posting this video to YouTube. So I'll choose 16 by 9 and that will change the size of the preview window. Then I'll tap the arrow on the left of the main toolbar to back out of here and I'll tap on Canvas and add a blurred background just to give something to fill the entire 16 by 9 preview area and remove those black bars when I post the video to YouTube. I'll tap on Canvas and then Blur and choose my level of blur. You might want to do this before you start editing your clips because if you cut a clip, you'll have to do this twice to get the same blurred background throughout your entire video. Now I can resize and reposition the text that's on screen as I need to. You can edit the text by pinching and zooming to resize, long press on the text and drag it around to move it on the screen and to make the text bigger, spread your fingers apart. I'm going to scroll to where the scene changes, and I will split the text layer. Tap the text layer to select it, giving it the white border that you see. Then you'll see a split option. Bring up the keyboard, remove the text that's there, and type your new text. Remember that I've sped up typing for the purpose of this tutorial, and I can't actually type this fast. Here's one additional content creation tip for you. Remember to turn off on-screen notifications while you're screen recording, because if you don't, you'll have to edit them out of your video later. In this case, I've left it in so I could give you that tip. Once I'm done, I'll tap on the check mark to dismiss the keyboard, move to the next area where the scene changes, and repeat that process. I'll select the text layer, split the text layer, type my text, and then continue.
here you can see I'm adding my next line of text. I'll make a split and repeat that process again. When creating subtitles, make them as short as possible so that they fit on screen and it will be easy for the viewer to see, you to understand as your video plays if you're doing a voiceover, and the YouTube subtitle algorithm to understand. Notice that I need to do one additional step once dark mode is activated because the background turns dark. So I need to change the text color from black to white. Also, if you can't edit a text layer by double tapping on the layer, use the little pencil icon at the corner of the box. This will bring up the keyboard. I'll type the text for this line and then I'll tap on style once more to change the background color to white. Because I used one main text layer, you'll notice that for the rest of the video, the background color will be changed to white as I'll be splitting the layer each time I change the text. This is the last statement that I'll add, so it will appear from here to the end of the video. The last part of this video is just me showing you how to get from the settings page back to your profile page. Now that you're done adding your text for subtitles, and while we take a look at the final clip, I'd like to give you some additional tips if you're planning to use the text-to-speech feature. The first tip is don't export your project before you activate the text-to-speech because if you use an exported video, the orange text boxes, which are required for the text-to-speech feature to work, will not be inside your new project, although the text will be on screen. The second is to make sure that you fix all of your mistakes before you use the text-to-speech feature because the artificial voice that you choose will read the statements exactly as they are written. When this switches from light to dark mode, you might notice a mistake. This was made on purpose so that I could make this point for the tutorial, but in my next video where I show you how to use text-to-speech, with the text already set up, I'll make sure to fix that mistake for you.